Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 31st, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, as you may have heard, Florida was hit by a significant hurricane today. Luckily, Jacksonville, where I live, wasn't really affected. But I figured maybe a good opportunity to sort of share some general hurricane preparedness tips. Of course, much of that can be applied to all kinds of disasters. One issue actually that uh, someone brought up in a comment on social media was that uh, the sort of home office small business type of setups are even more significant now with people working at home where your disaster recovery plan will often depends on people being able to continue to work at home. But on the other hand, you may actually have an advantage if you have a more geographically diverse uh, workforce in that not everybody necessarily is affected by a disaster like this. So if you're interested, uh, take a look at the diary I wrote and any comments, any other tips uh, that you may find useful, uh, please uh, share them. And Security Labs uh, did release uh, proof of concept, exploit, and details about uh, fixing uh, vulnerabilities in Notepad++. Notepad++, a very popular uh, Windows application. The problem here is if you open a crafted file with Notepad++, well, remote code execution may happen. Now, before you say, okay, you know, nobody's ever going to open a random document in Notepad++ at the overall vulnerability here is very similar to many of the exploits that we have seen, uh, for example, against Microsoft Office software. And a developer or someone else using Notepad++ quite regular may, of course, open a random document they receive in an email or find on a website in this uh, tool. The problem here is that the vulnerabilities have not been fixed yet. Security Lab, who identified these vulnerabilities, I think has done a real good job, at least according to our timeline, in not just notifying Notepad++ maintainers, but also suggesting, for example, fixes and even creating some private pull requests for them to incorporate these fixes. But that apparently has not happened so far. Even though the vulnerabilities were reported back in April and multiple new versions of Notepad++ have been released since. Well, lately I talked a lot about WinRAR and how some of the vulnerabilities in WinRAR were exploited. Turns out WinRAR is not alone. 7-Zip also just a fixed security vulnerability that could lead to arbitrary code execution if a malicious squash FS image is being decompressed with 7-SIP. This particular vulnerability has a CVSS score of 7.8 that looks realistic with a risk of high. You do need to open that file. Of course, the attacker again has to trick uh, the victim into opening the file. One note, uh, this vulnerability was fixed in version 23.00. There is now a version 23.01. Sadly, the change log for 23.00 doesn't actually note that this version does fix a security vulnerability. And for all of you interested in BGP, there is a nice blog post by Ben Cox looking in some issues with BGP error processing. The motivation for the blog post was an incident uh, where an ISP in Brazil did make a BGP announcement that used a new attribute, which uh, wasn't really understood by many routers, but Juniper routers essentially had a problem parsing this attribute, which led to them dropping uh, their BGP uh, routes. One of the issues here, and that's not necessarily a problem, uh, but that attributes that are not understood are often just forwarded. And so the source of the problem here can be quite far away from where the issue actually then happens happens. This is something we have often protocols where attributes, extensions, and options alike are just forwarded if uh, they're not understood, not processed necessarily uh, locally. 
In BGP, there's actually sort of a flag that you can set that determines if a certain attribute is forwarded if it's not understood by the router that does the forwarding. But the problem then happened with the error being fatal because the receiving router didn't quite implement this attribute correctly. Interesting blog post, so lots of details about BGP. If you're interested, uh, please you know, refer to the show notes for the complete link. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.